All right, so let's talk about hand placement. So for the back hand, uh, for an ollie, I put my hands about like this. But for a heel flip, I'm going to pull my my uh, back hand slightly towards me, kind of like uh, when you do a heel flip on a real skateboard, you put your feet a little bit further, or at least I do. put my feet further towards me, or further this direction. So I'm going to put my hands about right here, uh, my back hand about right here. And then the front hand, uh, I used to use my fingertips, and that would definitely get the rotation spinning, but it, I found it was very inconsistent and hard to place the flip in any location. It's, it doesn't have a lot of control. So I used to, I used to feel flip like that. And while it works, it's just kind of ugly and it, it doesn't work very well. So I decided to kind of move my hand forward, you know, like a taking inspiration from a, a real skateboard with my feet. And I found that this position right here works best for me. So uh, I have the, basically the, the base of my fingers. Right here, resting right on the inside of the, of the concave, right on the inside of the deck. And what I do is when I pop, is I tilt my hand up and that allows for the board to flick that direction. And with the hand back here, the popped area this way, like when you put pressure, on this corner is it, it turns the board a little bit this direction giving your hand an edge to hit and flick so I put my hand back here front hand right about here and when I pop I tilt my hand and it flips it that way so in essence it'll flip it about like this So that is a heel flip broken down to its two components, the pop and the flip. So let's talk about the backhand a little bit more. Um, a lot of people pop with two fingers, and while that works, there's not a lot of power, in my opinion, solid power, that comes from a two-finger pop. Um, your, 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 these three fingers are kind of like... They're kind of all joined into, you know, this string of ligaments and tendons. Uh, your pinky doesn't really offer much. I mean, his, his, he's over here, but, you know, this tendon right here is for these three fingers. And that tendon offers a lot of power, a lot of spring, a lot of pop. So try putting three fingers on here rather than two. Especially, this, this is not good in my opinion because this promotes a forward or backwards pop. So three fingers on the tail for everything. Um, and remember, this is the second thing, you're going to want to pop straight down, directly to China, straight through the table. You don't want to bring any rotation into this pop. And a lot, I, I know a lot of people do that, and they do it to entice a forward momentum, but what I find is if you're going to heel flip, just roll and pop straight down and you will continue with your momentum. Um, so pop straight down. Three fingers straight down. And now just as important as hand placement is timing with anything in handboarding and skateboarding. Timing is crucial. So what I mean by timing is the time between your pop and your flick. So if you were to flick and pop close together, you would most likely have a low fast heel flip. So 
That is a fast pop. I didn't, the, the tail didn't even hit the ground. If you space those timings out, you can, you can kind of hone the speed of your flip and the height of your flip. So it's important to get that timing right. So start with whatever is most comfortable for you. And then if it's low and slow or high and fast or whatever, I mean, some people like high, slow heel flips. Some people like really low, fast ones. Find what works best for you, but I believe that that comes down to the timing between pop and flick. So I'll try to demonstrate. It doesn't always work. It's a theory of mine. So I'm gonna do a short timing between pop and flick. So I was basically at the exact same time. And now I'm gonna do a medium, regular heel flip. So that's more, that's like a really relaxed, nice, like organic timing. And now I will try a heel flip with the latest flip possible. So it's almost like a late heel flip. So you can see it goes a little higher, but it's also slower. But you can still time your flip out late and have it flip fast and high. So that was a fast flip, but it continued flipping up and high. And you can also have a low, slow flip. It really depends on your intensity of your flip, the timing between the two. And it also has to do with the intensity of your pop. So these are the intensity of your pop, the timing between the pop and flip, and the intensity of your flip that has, those are the three basic uh, factors of your height and speed. There's one other factor, and that's direction of flip that can place your heel flip into a tail slide, crooked sl slide, um, even a heel flip front nose, and uh, while you do pop a little bit with this, uh, you know, pop in that direction, but front side or back side, um, the flip really does come into play, especially for like a heel flip crook. I typically pop straight down, but I will flick at an angle and push down a little bit to get my heel flip into that position. So I'll show you that real quick. 